In this video, we are going to work on constructing linear models. So in order to construct linear models, we've got to have some, some ground rules here set out. We talked about slope in a past video, but we haven't talked about the y-intercept. So the y-intercept, by definition, um, it's where the graph crosses the y-axis. And that makes sense when you think about intercept, right? And it's the y, so it's where it crosses the y-axis. Um, by symbol, we note it as b. Don't ask me because I don't know. Um, but other inf interesting things. When x is 0, that's when we have the y-intercept. And you'll see that graphically. x is the starting point. So when x is 0, we have the y-intercept. So therefore, the y-intercept is the starting point of the graph. Okay. Now, our linear models are noticed as y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope, b is the y-intercept. And you might say, well, what's this y and this x business? Well, when you graph a line, the x and y are coordinates that represent all the points on the line. So they will stay in that equation as just x and y because they represent everything on the line. So that when we write equations, we will need the slope, we will need the y-intercept, and that's it. Okay, the, the dependent variable is y, the independent variable is x. So that means that y depends on x, okay? So y depends on x. And you will see that again as we work through examples, not just in this video, but in future videos as well. All right, so let's get to it. Uh, David weighs 240 pounds and sets a weight loss goal of 2 pounds per week. Let x, okay, now not every problem is going to tell you, but sometimes they say, let x represents the number of weeks which go by. Find the linear model, which represents how much David hopes to weigh after x weeks on the plan. And so it's really important, and, and whether you do it at the beginning or the third step, it's not that, you know, whatever. Do it whatever step you want. But what's the independent, what's the dependent variable? Well, they tell us that x is the independent variable, is the number of weeks that David is on this weight loss plan. So after a bunch of weeks go by, y is going to be his weight. Right? If he's losing 2 pounds a week, after 10 weeks he has a certain weight. After 12 weeks he has a certain weight. After 80 weeks he has a certain weight. So the, the dependent variable is his weight. His weight depends on how many weeks have gone by in this weight loss system. Alright, so what is the unit measure of x? Well, in this case, we are talking about weeks. And you might say, well, Becky, we just answered that here in Part B. True, but it's important to recognize and to see, as we go through these different examples um, throughout the course of the videos, the unit measure of x of our independent variable almost, all, almost always um, deals with some aspect of time, whether it's days, hours, months, years, weeks, right? It's just... Um, uh, time, a reference of time. Now, what is the, the y-intercept or the starting point? Well, if you recall from our problem, David's right now weighs 240 pounds. So that is our starting point. Our starting point is 240. When he's so zero, how many weeks have gone by? None. He hasn't started yet, but now he's going to start and he weighs 240. What is the slope? The slope is the rate at which things are changing. Well, if we're talking about his weight, how is his weight changing? Well, it's going to go down two pounds a week. Two pounds in one week. That's the, well, that's the goal anyway. If it's going down, that means decreasing. So we're going to have a negative two. So the slope is negative two. All right, which makes sense. His, slope, his, his weight's going to go down. So when I go to write my linear model, y equals slope. My slope is negative two times x, where x represents the number of weeks plus my y-intercept, which in this case is 240 pounds. And it's positive because he weighs 240 now, right? So this is my linear model. And we can use, do a lot of things to uh, figure out how this works, right? So how much does David hope to weigh after four weeks? Well, remember, that means x is 4. So if I have y equals negative 2x plus 240, I can go ahead and say, let's plug in that 4 for x. So y equals negative 2 times 4 plus 240. When I solve this mathematically, I do multiplication first. 
So negative 2 times 4 is negative 8, plus 240. That means David will hopes to weigh 232 pounds after 4 weeks. Okay, what about 10 weeks? Well, I take that same formula, but I plug in 10 for x. And again, I multiply, so negative 20 plus 240. David hopes to weigh 220 pounds after 10 weeks. That'd be a great weight loss system, right? How long will it take David to reach his goal weighing 180 pounds on this plan? Okay, well, y equals negative 2x plus 240. 180 represents his ending weight, and y is his ending weight. So 180 is the goal. How many weeks have to go by on this plan? Well, if you solve this, we've got to do the same thing to both sides. We need to get x by itself. So if I subtract 240, because that's you always want to work farthest away from your variable and then get closer. So 240 minus 240 gives me 0. That leaves me with negative 2x. And 180 minus 240 on this side gives me negative 60. I now divide both sides by negative 2, and x equals 30. So that means it will take David approximately 30 weeks to reach his weight loss goal of 180 pounds. Now, <clears throat> let's graph this. Okay, well, I know that it's going to take 30 weeks to hit 180. I just did that. Well, 30 weeks is over here, and his goal is at the bottom. So that is down here. But I also know that from previous, 10 weeks gives me 220. So here's 10 weeks. I go up from 10 all the way to 220. So this is going to be not straight at all because I'm drawing with my finger on an iPad. But you get a couple dots, and you can connect them and it will be roughly a straight line. And this is the graphic of David's weight loss plan week by week, if, if everything works, right? It's actually not a horrible line. I'm kind of impressed with myself there. All right, now, if David were to raise his weight loss goal to three pounds a week, how would the model and the graph change? Well, remember, his weight loss plan of how much per week, that's the slope. So the only thing that changes is that his slope would now be negative 3 instead of negative 2. So we would still have the same y-intercept, right? He still starts at 240, but let's get a couple different points so we can change the graph. After 5 weeks, well, y equals a negative 3 times 5 plus 240. That gives me 225. And at, let's go 10 weeks, so y equals negative 3 times 10 plus 240. That gives me uh, to 10. So I can graph these three on, and I'll switch to a blue to graph these. So we're still at 0, 240. At 5 weeks, we're at 225, we said, which is in here. And at 10 weeks, we're at 210. So you can see that this graph is a little bit different. He will reach his weight loss plant goal in 20 weeks instead of 30 if he ups it to 3 pounds a week. And I think that is the end of our plan. Yeah. There you go.